ASUS needs to address this, they need to fix it. I don't understand why they don't. ASUS, if you're watching, fix it, because it sucks. Here at Linus Tech Tips, we try our darndest to cover topics that'll be both interesting and useful to you, our valued audience members. But odds are that you, Jeff oh. or Steve or Jack, have a very you problem that we've never managed to cover and you just want someone to talk to about it. Well, today you can. And it's brought to you by 3CX, who provided the phone system that we used to create the phone maze that you are going to have to navigate in order to get through to me. Thank you for calling Linus Tech Tips. On Twitter, uh, Linus Tech Tips tweeted out that they are doing this thing called Press One for Tech Tips. Where they've tweeted out a phone number and I've got to call it. Because I have an issue with my computer. I need tech support. I've tried everything. I even bought the water bottle from LTTstore.com and it really hasn't solved my issue. This number when you call in is supposed to have like a very hilarious automated phone system for you to get through the directory and stuff. So I'm gonna call this number. <laughs> I've got the hotline put into my phone. And it's toll free, so it should be fine, right? Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Oh my god, what the hell? It's busy. Thank you for calling Linus Tech Tips. Please listen carefully as our menu options have recently changed. For TechWiki, press 1. For LMG Clips, press 2. For They're Just Movies, press 3. They're Just Movies, what? For Channel Super Fun, press 4. Thank you for selecting They're Just Movies, formerly known as Carpool Critics. What? We're unable to take, Wait, unable what? To take your formerly known as Carpool I didn't critics. do that. Carpool Mother <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Why do they all go to that one? Is it going to hang up on me now? Crap. For my detectives. Press nine. For all other inquiries, send a tweet at Colton. At Colton. Give me a tech tips, Linus. You have chosen tech tips. To make PC go brrrr, press four. Oh my god. Someone's calling. Hello? Howdy. <laughs> this is Dennis. What's your name? <laughs> what is this? You have chosen tech tips. Can I just speak to- ability issues, press one. Let's press one, I don't know what it said. Hello, Zachary, you've reached press one for tech tips. Holy shit! This is very weird. Well, it's only weird if you make it weird. What can I do for you? Well, I actually have a problem. I have one of the Founders Edition for the 3090s. That's a problem? Well, you know, I got multiple problems. My room is hot with this thing. Like, it's producing too much heat. But you know what? My other problem I have is, like, it keeps turning on and off. So the LED on the monitor, like, turns off and on? No, I'm sorry. Uh, the GPU on the LED. Okay, so the actual GeForce logo turns off and back yes. on. And it drops the output, but the system does not reboot. I don't have any experience with that exact problem, but what I can tell you is that anytime you experience something that is so weird that nothing could possibly explain it, it's either memory or the power supply. I actually had the power supplies that were exploding a couple weeks ago, and I exchanged that, and it's still doing it. Are you making this up? I cannot make this up. Are you on this computer right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm on it right now. I'm talking so to you. So it's working now. It's working fine. Okay. Have you tried doing a completely fresh driver install? Um, yeah. And it was doing the blanking thing before you reformatted and then it was doing it again after? It was not doing that on Windows, Windows 11. Yeah. It's probably software. So what I would do is I would get DDU. Are you familiar with DDU? I can Google it. Yeah, so Google that. So you're gonna wanna restart your system in safe mode, wipe out your NVIDIA drivers, do a nice fresh install. If that doesn't fix it, then go to NVIDIA because one way or another, this sounds like their problem, whether it's the hardware or the software. Man, that was quick. Do, so do I gotta pay you or some or tip you or? No, no, we give the tips. Wait, that was the whole point? Yeah, that's it. You just call in and get tech tips. Okay, well, all right. Thank you, Jason, for calling in today. What can I help you with today? You know, I was just seeing you guys made videos about installing Windows 11. Yep. And uh, I was just wondering, yep. how do I install less than one window? Because I got a few windows in my house that are broken. Oh, 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 you're funny. Please help my 3080. 
please. What you need to do is find yourself a toaster oven and put it in the toaster oven. Okay. Leave it in there for about an hour, and then you'll lug it back in, and your computer will maybe explode. Thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. Please note your call may be monitored for quality and training purposes. How can I help you? I have a problem with my USB audio DAC. I reinstalled the drivers, and that sometimes fixes it, sometimes doesn't fix it. It's weird when I unplug it and replug it back into resets it, but after every two hours it goes back to that garbled audio. So I was wondering if you could help me with this, this issue. What I suspect it is, is it's more to do with the USB controller that you have it plugged into. So most motherboards these days have at least two USB controllers on them. Uh, typically one of them is USB 2, and then the other one would be USB 3. Uh, can we have a look at the back of your computer? That's your face still. <laughs> So, it's, so. Yeah, I had your foot for a second there. That's hot. Um, Question for you. Are you running Ryzen 3000 or Ryzen 5000? Ryzen 3000. Okay, so you know there were some USB issues with Ryzen 3000 a little while ago, right? I had no idea. Now that I know you're running Ryzen 3000, I would say there's a really solid chance that you just need to update your BIOS and the issue will go away. Failing that, never hesitate to try a different cable. If you just have any other USB cable lying around, it, it can be worthwhile trying it just to see what happens. But I, I think that I've got this one nailed for you. All right, thank you. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> These tech tips are making me thirsty. Bruh. I hope it's good. Oh, they're fantastic water bottles. They're made with uh, the best materials. Um, uh, Do you feel me with you now, right now? I, I'm just next to you right now. You close your eyes, you can feel me right next to you. What? Hang on, me? Thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. How can I help you? So, I got my good old 3080 IP to retail for. Nice. Um, was working fine, um, and then it got really dusty. Mm -hmm. Cleaned it out, moved a few cables around just to make it look a little better, and now it's not displaying anything. Okay, so what happens when you press the power button? So if I press the power button, essentially the motherboard gives me an error code of 00. Okay, show me that. Code 00. zero. That sounds to me like basically nothing is happening. What cables did you move? Because usually zero zero is like your freaking CPU is not plugged in. So I moved these two cables. They were up here. I rerouted them down. And then I did a little troubleshooting because I took the two AIO cables. I did reseed the AIO once it wasn't doing anything and then still nothing. Here's what I want you to do. Can you check and make sure your 8-pin CPU power connector is seated all the way in? Cool. Okay, so let's flip that back power switch back on and let's try and fire this thing up. If this doesn't do anything, I might have bad news for you. All right, hit it. Yep, that's all I need to see. Go ahead and flip the back power supply switch off again and let's pop that AIO off. I don't know how you do this one-handed. For me, it's a, it's a top priority to be able to do things one-handed. That's why they call me One Hand Johnny. <laughs> I think I got Colton for the first time, and then he just told me to put the 3080 in my first oven and just hung up. And that's some good tech tips right there. All right, so the AIO is off. Okay, I want you to pull out your CPU now. Uh, you gotta lift up the arm. Did you lift up the arm? I did. You did, okay, okay. And just hold the CPU up to the camera. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to make this out from here, but do you see any bent pins? I do not. Let's go ahead and reseat it. Let's put that back in the motherboard ever so gently. Now uh, we're going to do an advanced move here. You're going to flip your power supply switch back on and we're going to power this puppy up. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Vinny. You got a big fat hardware problem here. If I had to guess, I would say probably motherboard. I'm glad it's not the 3080 because that's just the longest to get. I wish I had better news for you, but at least you are on the right track, I think, in terms of troubleshooting here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Linus. All right. No problem, Vinny. Take care. Oh, hi, Dennis. Hi. How are you? I'm glad I could, I could talk to you today instead. Instead? What do you mean? Who are you going to talk to? Obviously, I wanted to talk to Cole. Hey, this is Linus from Linus Tech Tips. I, I like to. Oh, no. 
Greasy Excess technology is something that we've never really had the chance to play with before. Normally we don't really have open phone lines here at Linus Media Group so you can just call us, but with a service like theirs, it is absolutely the kind of thing that we could conceivably do and it was surprising how easy it was to set up. You can do it in a number of ways. You can have it hosted by 3CX, which is the easiest option. You can host in your own private cloud on Google, Amazon, Azure, DigitalOcean, or whatever. Or you can even host on-premise with Windows, Linux, or even a Raspberry Pi. Their costs are super low. The standard license is free for a year. And hosting is also free for one year on all license sizes. 3CX is ideal for remote workers. Just install the free mobile or desktop app or use the web client, and they've got support for live chat, SMS, Facebook, and Google messaging with all of them coming together in one interface. So whatever your needs are, go check them out. We're gonna have them linked down below. And thanks again to 3CX for sponsoring this video. Hi there, thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. Please note your call may be monitored for quality and training purposes. How may I help you? I've got this really dumb thing. I downloaded SpeedFan a while ago. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. I have no idea how to get it to pick up my fans or detect them or do anything with this software at all, really. Here's a question for you. What vendor is your motherboard made by? This is an MSI X570A Pro. MSI will actually have a Windows-based utility that you can download instead of SpeedFan. Why do you need this? There is my first question. So I have a 3070 and sometimes it does get a bit hot, but the fans don't sound like they're super ramping up. So you want to control the fans on your GPU. GPU and CPU. Well, the GPU is easy. Uh, for that, you just want to download MSI Afterburner. There you go. That's what you want. So you're gonna make yourself a custom fan speed curve. So the more gradual this uh, slope is, the less you'll notice it going you know, up and down and up and down. So what we've done here is we've made it so your GPU is gonna be super quiet when you're not doing anything. But once you start to do something, it will ramp up much more aggressively. And then now if you wanted to have a more aggressive curve, all you would do is drag your dots up. Got it. That's pretty much it. That's your tech tip on how to use Afterburner to control the fan curves on your GPU. It's a lot easier if I have this, if I have these things right in front of me at the same time, but that's okay, we made it work. All right, thanks, Sean. Yep. I'm gonna move on to my next tech tip. Take care. For Mac address, press five. You selected Mac OS. As we all know, it just works. So instead of technical support, please enjoy the STEM music to help you relax while you use your working computer. Uh. All right, yeah, what's your question? What you got? Are you in Oh, my God. <laughs> so my phone has this ghost touch issue. So the trick is you have to take an electrode and use that to touch right. the phone. Okay, but... Also, you okay. can try microwaving it if that doesn't work. Hello, thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. Please note your call may be recorded for quality and training purposes. How can I help you today? I'm having issues with my computer. My fans are always at 100% no matter what. My fans are always at 100% too. Just like you, Adam, you're 100%. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness though, let's have a look at what you're working with here. By the way, I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to jump right out ahead of you and say, I think your fans are plugged into a water pump header on an Asus motherboard. I've checked it. Okay. It's a bit embarrassing that I can't figure it out as well because I work in IT myself. How sure are you that all of them are actually stuck at 100%? 95%. Did you like stick your finger in them and make sure? Okay, yeah, these are going, these are going. Okay, let's reboot. I wanna have a look at your BIOS settings. Uh, hold on, can I can I just see, yeah, let's just close out of this interface and go to monitor. Two fan configuration, let's go in there. And let's go to yeah. chassis, chassis fan configuration. PWM mode, follow CPU temp. Yeah, let's change that to PWM. A water pump Q fan control, let's set that to enabled. Just for fun, PWM mode. It looks like neither of these is gonna allow themselves to be controlled at all. Now that's fine, just, just ignore these, go back. Water Pump yeah. Plus, we are plugged in to W Pump Plus then. We are getting an RPM sense okay. off that. Man, people are coming at me with the challenging ones today. W Pump Plus is the one right above it. We do not want to use that one. So let's move that down to the high amperage one. Okay, we're significantly quieter now. Yeah, all right, now let's go ahead, press F10. How's our fan noise? These are not so bad. But these ones are still definitely going at really high speed. 
Okay, let's go back and have a look at the BIOS again. Now we can see our CPU fan speed is 1000 RPM. That's right near the rated speed of these fans, so that could be running at 100%. Now, what is your CPU temperature? Go up to the top again. 41 degrees, no, that should be fine. Might be a warm day. So let's go back to the fan control. Yeah, go down, go down, keep fan configuration. Yep, okay, so CPU, ah, okay, let's change that over to PWM mode. It's so cool, I'm getting lined to troubleshoot my computer. <laughs> One of the challenges though is if you have some of the fans plugged into a header that just isn't respecting those curves, it's really hard to tell when they're working or not because the system is going to be as loud as the loudest individual fan in it. Okay, so for whatever reason, the CPU optional header is respecting your fan curve, but the CPU fan speed header is not. What is actually plugged into that header? Uh, that is actually just the um, AIO, so that's the RPM header. Okay, so is your system quiet then? I think we're quieter now. I don't know if you can hear that, but... I can't hear anything. I think you resolved it. <laughs> you know what's great? You were totally plugged into a pump header. It's a really common thing. Every time I have trouble on an ASUS board with fans not responding to fan curves properly, it's one of those headers. ASUS needs to address this. They need to fix it. I don't understand why they don't. All right, Adam, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to move on to my next call. All right, perfect. You have a good one. I looked online and found a great deal on the Gigabyte Power Supply, the 850 watt one. I heard you got five feet of these. I want to hire you. Ooh. I can pay you in NFTs. <laughs> NFTs? Whatever the problem is, just throw your computer out the window, and then you won't have any more problems. I mean, I'll do that right now. Oh, excellent. Thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. <clears throat> so my computer is doing this strange thing where it plays uh, electronic music. Okay. And it says, give me tech tips. Uh, so check this one out. Give me tech tips. Uh, I can't open up test manager. Oh boy. This is Taryn at Chipotle, Evans and Gilpin. Would you like guacamole on that? Whoa. Hello, this is Taryn at Chipotle, Evans and Gilpin. You want guacamole on that? This is Taryn. You want guacamole? Nobody understands the Chipotle references. Thank you for calling Press 1 for Tech Tips. How can I help you? We just moved into a university dorm, and our internet likes to cut out a lot. How do you know it likes it? Well... Are you plugged in using a wire, or are you trying to use Wi-Fi? I have everything over wire. Okay, why don't you run me through how the setup works? I believe we have coaxial with SHAWs, what the university has. So the thing about coax internet, every time you split it, there's some signal loss. You're losing some gain. When one of them cuts out, do they all cut out? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, we haven't figured that out. When you guys lose your connection, do you, you go over and look at the SHAW box. Does it say it is connected to the internet? There's probably nothing I can do about this because it sounds to me like you've just got copper cables that are doing rotten, ugly, old copper cable things. So yeah, I wish I had better news for you guys, but you're gonna have to have Shaw come out and un it because they're the only ones who can, I think. All right. That sounds about right. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, hey, have a great semester, all right? To hear a dad joke, press six. All right, all right, all right. Why was the cell phone wearing glasses? Because because he lost his contacts. <laughs> How can I help you today? When I built my PC, I got both a 970 uh, Evo Samsung SSD, mm -hmm. and I also got an Intel Optane 280 gig. Well, that's not really a question, is it? Is that really getting me any benefit? For your 970, you're using an Optane cache? No, I would actually not recommend that use case. And the only reason I know this is because back when they first released, well, whatever that initial Optane cache drive they released was, I specifically asked them the same thing. I was like, Hey, whoa, you know, could I use this as a cache for my SSD? On like a data center scale? Absolutely. The problem is that Optane connected to an NVMe interface doesn't have the same kind of advantages as Optane plugged into a memory slot. When you add an Optane drive as a cache, my understanding is that it doesn't contribute additional capacity anyway. I'm using a Primo cache. Can I pitch you a crazy idea? I like crazy. Why don't you just get a hard drive? 
If you threw that on your hard drive as a cache, you'd be blown away by how it performs. I was thinking about that too, that makes sense. I think that's your best bet. Don't waste money on a high cap SSD if you're comfortable with the concept of caching and if you already have a Primo Cache license. Thank you so much, Linus. Take care, have a great weekend. Linus Cat Tips, Brad Seven. Cat Tips?